David Njoku, who's currently tight end 12, according to DLF ADP right now, going ahead of players like Cole Komet, Noah Fant, Albert O, Zach Ertz, Trey McGride, Irv Smith. He just signed a four-year, $55 million contract, but honestly, I don't know why the Browns offered it to him. I don't think he's really played well enough to get this contract. Uh, in 2017, it was his rookie year. You don't expect much from rookie tight ends. Not a problem. 2018, he finished his two, tight end nine, but was tight end 15 in points per game with only 7.2 points per game. 2019 was a lost season due to injury, and then the Browns went and signed Austin Hooper to replace him. And he was pretty good last year on a limited on limited opportunities, fifth in yards per target. But the thing is, he's been playing behind Austin Hooper the last two years. He signed his big contract. I'm not sure he's worth the ADP right now, especially considering Deshaun Watson's out for the season. Now, I know Skyler's probably going to bring up some information about he looked into that Jacoby Brissett might actually be better for Njoku because he tends to favor tight ends more. Still, like, I'm a little bit worried that lack of Deshaun Watson hurts the offensive enough that maybe that's still still a negative for David Njoku. And really, you know, I'm looking at, like, all these players I mentioned before, Cole Komet, Noah Fant, Albert O, Zach Ertz, Trey McBride, Irv Smith. Like, these are all players I'd rather have than Nate, David Njoku just straight up. And in a lot of these cases, you might be able to get on something on top of them trading away David and Joku. David, what do you think about Njoku? Um, I think at that price tag, it and there's this is why you gotta always specify when you're talking about buys and sells, because at the tight end 12 price tag, I would agree with just about everything you said there. Um, and that's DLF and that's using uh mocks from that Ryan McDowell compiles from people on Twitter, um, which are pretty accurate uh, data. I like I said, I like to use the Dicos. Um or Deco, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but he's got an ADP that he pulls from sleeper leagues. These are actual dynasty leagues and stuff. And it, uh, Njoku's going actually a little bit lower. He's going at tight end 18 there, which is just uh, behind McBride, Alberto uh, at tight end. Yeah, that's where I have him ranked, actually. So I think I like him at that price tag. Tight end 12 is a, a little rich for me there. Um but I do think that people are knocking him back down with the Watson news. You know, this is an ongoing development, so the ADP is always going to be a little bit behind on that. Uh, so I think he's kind of getting that uh, cushion a little bit back back down. And like you said, he hasn't really done anything to make us happy with him at any point. <laughs> he's just kind of disappointed. But when you look at it, like when you look back, like, 56 receptions for 639 yards, four touchdowns. That's not a bad second year. He was a good prospect, the first round prospect. He's a good athlete, runs 4'6, 440. Uh, he was, uh, like I said, drafted early, decent rookie year, 32 receptions, 386 yards. And then it all obviously, uh, the wheels ran off the track. Uh, they brought in Austin Hooper, and then for the next two years, he was bad. Last year, had a little bit of a resurgence. Uh, 475 yards, but they gave him a big contract. And Watson, if you believe it's only going to be a season or a significant chunk of it, but he will be back after a season, that's multiple years of David Njoku being tied to an elite quarterback, which is what we look for. And that would put him in his first like green situation. I mean, probably all he's been in the red, like his whole career, nothing's helped him at all. So uh, at that price tag, a lower price tag, I'm interested in, in buying him now, especially while the Watson uh, kind of news is keeping it down before people are all right, kind of thinking Watson will be back eventually. Uh, the hype will start coming back a little, especially towards the end of uh, this season. Yeah, my only note is if you're excited about him playing with Deshaun Watson, I'd still want to get out now and then just try and buy back in in the middle of the season maybe when his price may have come down playing with Jacoby Brissett. I Skyler. think – or, no, go ahead, David. Can I say one something. point on that? And I yeah, think it, yeah. that does make sense if we're talking about like a portfolio. Like, I want to buy right, right. my Njoku's now or whatever. <laughs> if you're in like one league, something sure you can't really always plan to trade away a player and then trade back for him. Um, right. So, I'm fine trading for him now or keeping him now or drafting him now at his price tag. Yeah. Because I think the Watson news is keeping it down a little bit. Skyler? Um, oh, he's, he's, he's a, 
he's a tougher player to trade for now that rookie drafts are kind of over. I think when rookie draft season was kind of hyped up, he was closer to that like tight end 18 price tag, which is where I have him in my rankings. And you could have moved an early third for him. At least that's where like the tight end 18 is usually priced around. Um, so that's where I would have been looking to buy him at. And it's a little harder to come at managers now because they're not going to take a random third for David, you know, for David Jokes. But if you really want him, you're going to give me a second. And at that point, you know, we're starting to creep out of uh, kind of out of my price range. But my biggest thing with David and Joku here is that when if if, some, if news does come out with Deshaun Watson, he's out for this season. That could secretly be a, a good thing, in my opinion, for the tight ends in Cleveland. I was just looking back at the history of Jacoby Set, Deshaun Watson, and Kevin Stefanski. Um, and just based off that, I'm anticipating there's going to be a slight boost in, in passing play percentage for Cleveland with either of those quarterbacks. And when they played with Baker Mayfield, uh, Kev, Kevin Stefanski teams targeting tight end. And when he, when he took over his offensive coordinator in Minnesota for those four weeks, it was 23% in Cleveland. It's been 13%, 30%, 29%. For Deshaun Watson, it's been 21%, 90%, 20%, 19%. Jacoby Brissett, in his, his since starting, has been 30% targeting tight end, 29% targeting tight end. And then last year in his, his four starts with Miami, it was 32% targeting the tight end. He loves to hyper-focus the tight end there. And Cleveland, the last two years, they've – They've passed the ball 54% at 62 plays a game, 52% at 63.7 plays a game. Houston, for Deshaun Watson, has passed 63% of the time at 58.8 plays per game, 58% at 64 plays per game, and 65% at 65 plays per game. And Jacoby Brissett has passed uh, similar to how Cleveland has, but he's, he's played at more plays per game as well. So I think if passing play goes up, passing uh, plays per game goes up, and tight end targets go up, Right, we could see a more overall volume going towards the tight end, and you taking away, you know, the uh, 108 was it? Um, Austin Hooper's had Austin Hooper's had like 60, 70 catches over the last, you know, in his two seasons with Cleveland. He's been hyper focused. So you take you take him out of the equation, and now we're only splitting that by two ways. It's slightly higher. I think, I think, you know, from that perspective, it could be just more volume going going towards uh, Injoku and Harrison Bryant is the other name I want to bring up where I think if you want to go a lot cheaper, a little more sneaky, he could be a name you could throw up. He's in the same situation, right? He's less athletic than Javon Jacky, so the ceiling isn't quite there. He's more in that Dalton Schultz, C.J. Hawkinson, where he's going to be, you know, be catching. You're hoping for a little more of a red zone usage. He's going to be getting, you know, no more than like 10 yards per target. Um, but, you know, and Joku does profile more to Kasiki, who is who percent hyper-focused last year in Miami. But before that, uh, Jacoby Brissett in his two seasons with Indi with Indianapolis – put 180 targets towards Jack Doyle. So that's a name that's, for you. No, that's just more of the player. I think where yeah. Harrison, where you could see a little more excitement towards Harrison Bryant. So at tight end 12, I'm completely out on David and Joku, but if you can get him for that early third type range, tight end 18 to tight end 20. Um, if he crashes down because news comes out with Deshaun Watts is not playing. I think he could be more of a sneaky buy just to see what happens. More of a speculative ad. And, um, the name that I prefer it costs is Harrison Bryant, but that's just, just my two cents. If so, yeah, it's, it's all cost here because we're seeing that the cost varies, you know, uh, and it's going to be, it might be league dependent. And, you know, based on what you're saying, Scott, or maybe uh, if you're interested in actually getting in the Njoku or Harrison Bryant business, maybe we wait till right before the season, maybe the value drops as the Watson news is hitting home for everybody. And you can buy in before this potential hyper targeting of the tight end happens. Yeah, I would wait until Deshaun news comes out. I wouldn't go right away because people might be thinking, you know, something I don't know. But once it, if that news comes out and it settles, people are going to be really cool off players in Cleveland. I think at that point you're going to see you're going to see players like Amari Cooper, maybe even David Bell, uh, David and Joku. Uh, Harrison Bryant, they're going to be a lot cheaper than they are now, or at least they were when Deshaun Watson signed that $250 million contract. 